So in this video we're going to be creating a simple shopping cart program. It's aimed at people who are kind of fairly beginner to Python, maybe you just learned a bit of Python, uh, went through some tutorials, and you want to make something a little bit more functional. Uh, this is something that is going to be very simple and then over time we're going to start expanding on it and making it into a, a bigger kind of program with a little bit more flexible code that would be used in a larger project. But we'll start very simple. So if you think about a shopping cart, all it is is like a list or a bunch of items. And uh, it's usually something you're going to purchase or, or buy, so we'll probably also have to have the total price of all those items. So if we want to make a shopping cart program in Python, we can just start simply by defining a list. So I'm going to create a variable, maybe called cart items, and make that equal square brackets, and that pretty much defines a list. If I were to output that right now, um, it'll be empty, but if I were to fill this list with items like apple or like uh, orange or watermelon, and we print that, there we go, apple, orange, watermelon. We have our list of three items. Now you can refer to individual items in that list by defining an index. So if I go here and print the items, card items, but in square brackets I, I give a number like two, that's going to output an individual item from this list. And if I run that, you can see it outputs watermelon. Why does it output watermelon? When it says two, you're thinking maybe apple is one, orange is two, watermelon would be three. So why is it outputting watermelon as two? Well, often in coding, zero is considered the first entry. So it's actually zero is apple, one is orange, two is watermelon. So if we output item zero, that's actually the first item. So if we run that, Apple gets outputted. Um, so that's something you have to keep in mind. Usually in programming, any list, any kind of numbering, usually starts as zero as the initial or the first item. So just keep that in mind. So that should just be useful information that you should already know. Um, but we're not going to really use that now. But just thought I'd mention it. So we don't want our cart preloaded with items. We want nothing in that list. We want to add items manually. So how can we add items to a list? We can do things like cart items append, and append will add items to that list or add entries into that list. So I could do append apple, append orange, append watermelon, and then if we output that list, so print uh, cart items, if we run that, there we go, apple, orange, watermelon. Uh, it appended all those items to the list. Even though it's empty here, we're adding to the list and then outputting the list, and now that list contains all three of those items. So that works great, uh, but often these items should have a price associated with them. Uh, if you have a cart of items, you probably want to know the total price of all those items. So we're going to define a new variable called uh, cart total and just initialize it with a value of zero, and we probably want to add prices to these. So one way you could do that is a very crude way where we can just say cart total plus or equals cart total plus the price of the apples 50 cents maybe the orange maybe 65 cents um, the watermelon maybe I don't know four dollars and then output our cart items and output our cart total so the price and if we run that we should get all our items and the total of those items. And that works. That's that's perfectly functional code. Uh, but it's kind of kind of boring that we have to kind of enter these these values individually. Like I don't really like that, like hard coding them in like this. Um, I think there's a better way we can do this. We're having to add two lines of code for each one of these two, which is not great. Um, we can make this better. So one thing we could have done also is not say cart total equals cart total plus the price. We could have just easily done cart total plus equals. And what that would have done is added this value onto the current total of this variable. So that's something that should already be known, but uh, would also give us the same output. So if I ran that, exact same output, cleaner code, looks a bit nicer to, to kind of read over. So that's something that we could have done but again, that's not a very good solution. We're going to make a function to handle adding cart items, because right now this is very crude. We're just appending it to a list and adding numbers to another variable. Uh, that's not going to be great, especially later when we start making this. 
a little bit more functional with more features. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a function. So I'm going to define a function here called add item, and it's going to be item name that we're going to have to input, and then the item price. And what we're going to do is when we run that function and we're inputting a item name and item price, it's going to add that item name to our list. So cart items plus or not plus uh, append item name and then the price we could say cart total plus equals item price now most people think there we go that's the way we're going to do it and then that's all going to work but this will not actually work if we start to run this like if we add an item apple and that price is 50 cents it's going to give me an error because this cart total variable is not going to be allowed to access this variable up here because it's outside of the function. So if I run that, it says unbound local error, local variable, cart total referenced before assignment. A lot of people get around this stuff with just defining a global variable, like global cart total. And if you define cart total as a global variable, it'll be able to do this easily. It'll be able to reference that variable outside of the function. Uh, but I don't like this, even though it perfectly works. Like if we have here, apple orange and we run this sure it works apple orange and there's our total great we have our working program but it's not too elegant I don't like the solution I don't like you know forcing global variables inside of a function it's just not ideal especially when you start expanding your code it gives you it could give you problems but really I just I just don't like the idea of it it's not a good thing to do um, so what I'm going to do instead, and this is what I'd prefer to do, is I'd like to return the item price. Now let me show you what this will do. You probably already know what this is going to do, but if right now I printed that function add item apple with a price of 50 cents, if I don't have this return, so I'll comment that out and I run this, and I'll get rid of these or just comment them out for now and run this says none. This is returning nothing. But if I return the item price and I run this, well there we go, it returns the price of that item. And in that process it's adding this item to our, our cart items because we have this append here where it's appending the item name to our list of, of cart items. Um, and again, you know, hard coding that cart items into this add item function is not ideal either, but for now we'll let it slide and later on we'll, we're going to be solving that. Um, but you know this this works for now and by returning the item price all we need to do now is do something like cart total plus equals add item and then our item name so apple the price and if we do that for multiple things like orange at 65 cents and then maybe we do bread at 450 and we run that, we output you know, the total and the cart items. Well, that all works. We get apple, orange, bread, and the total of all those items. So this is great because in one go, we're assigning our price to our cart total. We're adding it onto our cart total variable. And in the same time, um, by returning that item price, we're also adding that item name to our list called cart items, which contains the list of all the items. So it's an easy solution to look at and read and it makes things a little bit cleaner and it's just a bit more put together. So the whole purpose of this is you know to get coding quick with you know not too bad code so you can prototype things quickly, you can make things work quickly and to solve solutions quickly. Now we can make this a lot better and we will. Uh, one of the, the big problems here is what if we have multiple items like three apples and two oranges and we just run this. Well that all works but we see this list going apple, 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 orange, orange, bread. It gets very frustrating to see multiple entries of an item. It'd be nicer to see the quantity where I'd be able to see apple, three, orange, two, bread, one. So you could see the quantity. So if you had a, a cart with tons of, of quantity of certain items, it wouldn't just be this gigantic list. You'll see those quantities totaled. And that could be useful because you could get those quantities and you know total up the value of 
just one item. You could take that quantity times the price, and then you know the value of that group of one item, so the, the quantity, the multiple quantities of that one items, what the price is for those duplicate items. So that's something that, that might be useful, but even just visually, it'd just be nice to have the quantity of each individual item somewhere. So we can do that, and there's many ways we can do that, but we're gonna try to find you know the simplest way to do that, where it keeps our code simple and clean. And I, I think one thing that could be used for this that would be extremely useful would be dictionaries. So in Python, you can define a dictionary, and we'll do that by just doing something like cart summary, and we'll define dictionary by doing these curly brackets instead of these square brackets. Square brackets would be used to define a list. Curly brackets could be used to define a dictionary. And how that works, let's just output this cart summary, and I'll define it to have some items. We're not gonna add them right now, but we'll just put some fake items in there. Um, so we could see how this works. If you were to manually preload a dictionary with items, we could do something like apple, three, orange, two. Now what that's doing is we're having two values. We have the key and then we have the value. So key and value. And this comma is separating the items. So this is one pair of key and values, the next pair of key and values. So the key is like the name, the value is going to be the quantity in this case. And if we were to output that, there we go, we see apple 3, orange 2. Now the cool thing about dictionaries is there can't be uh, multiple entries of the same key. So you can't have like apple, apple, orange, orange. It, you can only have one entry of the same key. So if you were to, you know, go here and, and then all of a sudden add another orange with the quantity of five, it wouldn't add another orange entry, it would just update this this key's value to five. So you can update values, you can change values, uh, but you can't have duplicate keys, and it's it's something that becomes very useful in this case, because what we can do is we can tally up all these different um, entries and kind of total, you know, have individual keys that are, are non-duplicated and just total their values as what the value is. So the value will be the quantity. Now to do that, we're going to use something similar to a for loop. You might have done for loops before you should. It's one of the first things you should probably learn when learning to code Python. Uh, for loops are extremely important and just in case if you just want a refresher on that we'll go over that we have this list or this these cart items this list of items if we want to loop through all those items we could do something like for i and this is going to be the long way for i in range of zero to length of that list so the total number of items in that list cart items and then say print cart items i and what that's going to do is it's going to start at zero so for i in range it's going to loop through zero to whatever number is the the total of items in that list and it's going to loop through that counting from zero to however many items are in that list and each time it goes through it it's going to print the item and refer to the index as the number it's going through so it'll just output all those items in a line um, individually, separately on each line. So if we run this, apple, 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 orange, orange, bread, that all worked. It pretty much looped through the indexes of that list and outputted each item by its index number. And that's why we have this i here. It's a variable. It's referring to the current counter it's on, or the current kind of entry it's on from zero to the length of those max of those items in that list. Now there's a cleaner and more simple way we can handle this. Uh, we could just do something like, you know, this I doesn't have to be I, it could be like a J, it could be a K or whatever we want it to be. It doesn't really, whoops, not key error, okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It's just a variable variable name. So what we could also do is just saying like for item in cart items. And the reason why I'd probably do that is it just makes it, easier readable to understand. So I'll just do for item in card items print item and that will do the exact same thing. There we go. 
exact same thing, but a lot easier to read, a lot easier to type, and gets the job done. So that's a better way of doing things. So we should understand for loops. It just loops through all the items in this list and we're outputting them one by one. So what we could do is we could define dictionary. So let's create our cart summary again and make that equal. And this time we're going to say dictionary. So that's going to create our dictionary. And we're going to put in the brackets for item in cart item. So it's going to loop through all the items. And then it's going to define the key and the value. The key is going to be the item name. So the key will be item. The value is going to be the count of however many times that item name appears in the list. So we're going to do something like cart items count item. So what it's going to do is loop through all the items in our cart items. It's going to create the key as the name of the item and the value is going to be the count of however many times that item shows up in the list. And if we print that cart summary, it automatically will total all their items. So we have three apples, two oranges, one bread. Now if we go here and now print our cart total as well, we have our working mini program here. It lists the items, the quantities of them, and the total price. And if I were to remove things, like now I only have one apple and only one orange, but I you know, go crazy and have three loaves of bread, and then I also add like a watermelon for five dollars, and then we have like uh, blueberries for five dollars. You know, we run this, I'll clear this, it successfully tallies all that. Three bread, one watermelon, one blueberries, one apple, one orange. Then I go crazy and buy a ton of blueberries. It all updates, now six blueberries. And our total is like 49.65. Uh, so it's all working, everything's working, it's tallying it for us, showing us the quantity of each item and the total price, and the code is very easy to look at, very understandable, only 24 lines of code, and this is all just, you know, very manual right now, but it gives us an idea of how this is all working. So that's where we're going to leave it for now. In the next video, we're going to see how we can take this a bit further, add a few more features, not only be able to add items, but remove items, also look at a way of not having us to type in the price every time because that's how mistakes can happen and prices change. Maybe today blueberries are five dollars, tomorrow it's seven fifty. We don't know. So what we're going to do in the next video is also have it so the price can be fetched from another dictionary or a list or something that can be updated over time or grabbed from you know a server or something or whatever. Um, so we can have a list of prices so even if you had a cart set up and the prices change everything could be updated um, without us having to go in here and retype all the prices individually for each item. So we're just going to keep progressing through this code, cleaning it up, making it better suited for a larger scale project, and adding on to it to make something a little bit more usable rather than just a command line eventually. We'll, we'll start adding a UI and some other things to it. So we'll start building this up from here. Uh, but we'll leave it at this for, for now. And in the next video, we'll start adding additional features and making it a little bit more complex and kind of going over our code and just making it something a bit more usable. So that's where we'll leave it for now. Uh, keep an eye out for the next video. And if you like this, make sure to you know like the video down below and subscribe. And I'll keep creating more of these types of videos.